whoever can come by and look at it, that's sold on approval. Hold and, and that's a good technique. Because that's that at least you're doing something special for that customer. And maybe what you do is you get a little sticky tag and you put on your hold for whoever. Uh, and maybe I can only hold a day or so or whatever. But you don't want to hold anything for a long time. But that puts some urgency on getting them back in there to look at it. The other thing that it does is uh, in the case where you may want to sell on delivery, uh, you may want to actually deliver it on approval. Now that, that can be an expensive process, but it, uh, it's sometimes the only technique that works. What you say is, well, let me go ahead and write this up. If your wife or your husband or your uh, whatever doesn't like it, we'll take it back and exchange it. That's pretty expensive. I'd use that very sparingly as a last resort, but it is one way to close a sale. The chances are, if you have recommended product that's right for that particular screen, you get it in the house, it ain't coming out. Most of the time it's going to stick. But, uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, they won't let you complete the sale and make the delivery, but if you can at least get them to let you write it up so that they don't have to come back in. Well, that's a plus. So you can, you can get the name, the address, everything, so that they can just call you and you can arrange delivery from that standpoint. The idea is not to pressure the customer into a, a decision they're uncomfortable with, but they always to present it from the side of the customer's convenience. I mean, the reason that you're there is to help the customer uh, make the right decision and, and to make the buying process easy for them. Now, I'll talk just a minute about credit. When any place in the sales point where you've arrived at a stalemate, that is, you can't go forward to conclusion and sale, uh, you may want to raise the credit issue. And uh, you got to watch how you do that. I mean, it's a sensitive area for some folks. But a raise, a raising the credit issue might be, a, uh, you might use some uh, question like, will you be using credit for this purchase? Will you be using credit for this purchase? And that doesn't say, you know, there's nothing derogatory about that. That's, it's, it's you just, and if they say yes or maybe, uh, then you say, well, why don't you go ahead and let me get the credit application part done. And there again, it's for the customer's convenience. And when you decide, we'll be ready to deliver. And it, here again, this is a plan. This is part of a process that you want to follow that will help you improve your percentage of sales closings. They're little things. Arrange installation after you conclude the sale. And that's, it's very important that you arrange installation. Then you communicate with the people who are going to do the installation, hopefully in a written fashion, everything that they have to do when they go to the customer's home. For if the customer says, I want you to move my old refrigerator out on the back porch, Tell the installation that they're going to need to move the old refrigerator out on the back porch. You know, if they're going to haul something off, you need to tell Everything that you can do to make our installation people arrive, help them arrive at the location, fully prepared to do everything they got to do, the better it will be. And the more it will be. Communicate directions and special instructions. It means if, if the customer tells you something special about they won't be home or they got to work or whatever, Make sure you communicate all of that. Remember that their feeling, while they may be loyal to you uh, as a person, if we screw it up as a company, then we still, uh, they're good about us. So we need to, uh, to make those things. The, uh, our instructions, our deliveries, and all those things arranged properly. And of course, the follow-up is the part where you uh, get into the paperwork. You know we have a copy on the... Uh, Invoice that says uh, it's a green copy and it's basically a salesman's copy. And that's how you want to keep up with those copies and that's how you keep up with your customers. And after a week or so, you may want to call that customer up. In fact, I strongly recommend that you do. Ask them if the product is working okay. Are they happy with it? You know, occasionally you'll get somebody who'll give you a complaint. They know it didn't, uh, they blah, blah, blah. But the fact is that's okay because if they're not happy, we got to take care of that anyway. And it's much better... If we pick it up, correcting any dissatisfaction than it is till we wait to plane to us about it, to organization. If you take that, how you do that, 
If you use a one to thirty one file, if you'll take the little file folder and just numbers the little files one through thirty one. And if you're on today's on Monday and you want to call your customers one week later, then you just move over the seventh day down from that. You drop today's ticket in that seven days out on the seventh day from then. When you come to work, you, the, during the day, you find those, pull them out, and you call those customers up. It gives you an organized way to follow up. And you want to make yourself a note called such and such a date. The commitments or anything that you promise the customer, you need to make sure they get fulfilled. Because remember, uh, a long-term relationship is what we're after. And all long-term relationships are based on trust. Anything else is not. so you got to you got to look at that. Then then of course the next thing is you can organize that filing system so that you have access to who you sold a year ago. You know that's the kind of thing you want. Hopefully we'll have the computers in your doors before long. We can automate that system. But anyway, the thing that we can achieve here is uh, with a uh, own customer base, about 40 percent of all that you sell will come from people that you sold before from personal recommendations. And this is true, after 24 months, it should be about 40%. Well, you know what happens to the salesperson who has a good customer base and 40% of his sales are coming from referrals and repeat business? He does real good all the time, regardless of how everybody else in the organization or in his store is doing. We did some... Uh, that's the way you build your own base and your own future is by how you, how you handle those, that follow-up and uh, cut at that time. That's really just a selfish thing, but it's a, it's a good thing for the customer and a person to deal with and not just a company. And that's, that's all about cut loyalty and building the business. It's one customer at a time. I, I think that uh, pretty much covers what we have in the sales plan here. And uh, I want to take just a minute or two in conclusion, uh, Mark, I don't know if you need to record this. There are some other things that uh, 